Hi everyone, welcome to Off Shelf Books. Once again, just want to do another hands-on look of this book here, Christianity, Cults and Religions. And I don't know what to expect from this book other than what the title says, but we have the subtitle here, Cults and the Occult, Eastern Religions, Islam, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Witnessing to Cults. This will clearly be an informative book that takes a look at a lot of the main faiths and religions of the world. And it is a pretty thin book, so I'm not sure how much they're gonna really explore on this, but let's take a look inside here. The pages have a nice matte feel to them. And this one, this is fairly old. This is 2008 by Bristol Works. I've never heard of this publishing company. Okay, so we have our, we have our contents page here. Chapter one, Christianity, cults and religion. Chapter two, the Christianity cults and the occult. Chapter three, Christianity and Eastern religions. Chapter four, Islam and Christianity. So a lot of comparisons going on with Christianity and everything else. Let's see what chapter five is. Uh, 10 Q&A on Jehovah's Witnesses, and then 10 Q&A on Mormonism. Chapter seven, 10 keys to witnessing to cults. I'm quite interested in what this is gonna share and how they're gonna share. That's a lot they have to cover. These pages are just filled with pure text, uh, but they do have a little bit of formatting and tables here. I'm not sure if I like how much is crammed in here, but it works. So cults and religions, why should Christians study other religions? The New Testament offers us two kinds of examples. First, in Acts 17, the Apostle Paul engages with the non-Christian religions of his day. Paul knows their beliefs well enough to quote their spiritual authorities. And his goal is, to clear, is clearly to build bridges to help their followers understand the gospel. And this is why books like these are very valuable to have, especially in the realm of apologetics, because Yes, it's one thing to know your own faith, and clearly the Apostle Paul knew that his own faith very well, but what was even more impressive was what Paul knew about other people's beliefs and faiths, and that that may be a huge undertaking, but it's quite impressive and to your own advantage when, when you are talking to someone that doesn't share the same beliefs as you, at least you when you know their what they believe in, you can speak their language, and it's a huge advantage when witnessing to people and just sharing why what you believe is credible, especially when you can compare it to their beliefs, which you know as well. And hopefully this book helps a lot of people learn a little bit about those beliefs. And then second here, in their epistles, Paul, Peter, John, and Jude engage with the counterfeit gospels of their day in order to warn and instruct Christians about the teachings of false apostles and prophets, these New Testament writers had to be familiar with their claims. The writer's goal is clearly to uphold the faith and defend the flock, and they don't hesitate to identify deceptive and divisive teachers by name when appropriate. So this is also helpful for the, for the Christian himself or herself because um, there, there are going to be false prophets and teachers and beliefs that come and it's also important to know why you believe what you believe in because it will be challenged. So yeah, well, let's just flip through this quickly here. Jehovah's Witnesses. So this is kind of cool. You have these sections here. It gets right to the point. Who is the founder? What are the writings? What is their God? What is their view of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, salvation, death, and other beliefs? This is just fantastic because I think that is a challenge amongst Christianity is that you also have Jehovah Witnesses and, and then Mormonism here that speak very highly of Jesus, but they just don't see Jesus the same way Christians do. And so this is just really awesome that it gets right to the point here. Founder Joseph Smith writings, the Book of Mormon. God, the God of the far was once a man, but progressed to Godhood. So as you can tell right there, that's not the same God of the Bible. And even Jesus, they definitely don't 
see Jesus the same way. Jesus is a separate God from the Father, Elohim. He was created as a spirit child by the Father and Mother in heaven. So yeah, that's not what the Bible speaks on how Jesus always existed. He, was, he wasn't created and yeah, that's, <laughs> that's really all there is to it. And, but this is helpful because I think Mormonism and Christianity, a lot of times Mormonism does blur the lines of they they often say yeah we believe what you believe in yeah we believe in jesus but it's when you look at this when you get to the heart of matter it's not the same jesus so this is very this is so far proving to be a very helpful book i think i just love that it's simplicity wow united school of christianity never never heard of that before unification church um scientology i did hear about uh wicca wica I don't know. New Age, yes, that, that's definitely a, a growing cult. And then yes, we have Islam and then the Nation of Islam. Really loving that they're just tackling all these one by one. Because that, that's sort of how I am. I want to just get to the point in terms of like, yeah, what do they think of Jesus? What do they think of God? What do they think? What are their, what are their writings? Who is their founder? And this is pretty helpful. Yeah, I don't, Buddhism. Yeah, some of these I've never heard of before. So then we get to biblical Christianity and yeah, they get to it. Origins, key writings, key beliefs, key practices. And then, yeah, they're doing it for all these Freemasonry. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this word. <laughs> I'll let you guys try that. Uh, Kabbalah Center, the Church of Satan, Satanism, yeah, that's that's a thing. Spiritualism, and yeah, they're all they're all touching on the same thing: origins, key writings, key beliefs, and that's awesome. I love the the consistency in this book. Anthroposophy, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be diving into this. I'm gonna be reading this book because this is this I'm finding very beneficial. I don't think I don't think personally we need to get to a place where we have to study every kind of cult and religion and faith out there. There simply is just too much out there. It'll make your head spin. But I'm glad they're tackling the main ones. These extra small ones are just bonus. Uh, yeah, they have a terms and definitions section here. Uh, Satan, sorcery, spell, spirit. Okay, now we have chapter three, Christianity versus the Eastern religions. So I'm probably gonna be doing a lot of flipping pages back and forth. It kind of would be nice to put all in one chart, but at the same time, I understand that it's probably better to have separate pages. Sikhism, Hinduism in the West, and then Buddhism, no God is needed. I think they could have done a slightly better job with the graphic design. It just is a lot of text. I mean, they there it is organized, but I think uh, the structure could have been a little bit better personally. Shinto, Buddhism, and again, other terms and definitions. And then of course we get to Islam and Christianity, which I think is probably the most, one of the most important chapters to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I love that it's short explanations, what Muslims believe, the five pillars, Jihad, Judgment Day, and then what Christians believe. I'm actually more and more impressed with this book as I go on. Now I'm certain there's going to be there's other resources that could be better than this one. I I would wager that is the case. But for the size of this book, I'm quite impressed with how much content they're delivering on here. Ten keys to witnessing to cults. One, no basic Bible teachings. Yeah, absolutely, I would agree. Two, don't assume every cultist believes the same thing. Yes, absolutely true. Cultists are trained to answer objections. Four, check scriptures. Yes. <laughs> Point number five, define terms. That's actually a very helpful one. I don't think too many apologists do that. I don't think they define the terms because a lot of times what should be a helpful dialogue can turn pretty fast into an argument. When you don't actually define the terms, uh, you're not really creating a structure in place for that conversation. A lot of times it can go off the rails. Six, ask strategic questions. Seven, I agree 
200% be loving. I think any Christian worth their salts uh, would have to adhere to this, especially in apologetics. Eight, demonstrate Jesus' deity. Never heard that one before. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Number nine, emphasize the gospel. Yeah, um, if you were just stuck on an elevator for a minute and to explain the gospel, of course, it would take more than a minute, but if you only had a minute, it is nice to maybe learn about how you would explain what the gospel is and know what the gospel is. Give your testimony. And while, sure, that can be a relative form of evidence, you can't always use testimony as direct evidence, but you can't argue with it either at times. And I, I'm glad it is number 10 because I don't think that should be your first go-to. But I think if you, as you develop a relationship with people that don't see the same as you, uh, you get to do is share that. And I think that can be a fun part of, of witnessing to people. So yeah, you have resources at the end here, a leader guide. So overall, I'm quite satisfied with this book. I don't know if I would say this is the be all end all. I mean, I guess they do have other Rose publishing books here, Bible charts, maps, and timelines. So yeah, they have a lot of good stuff here. I think Rose has done some pretty great stuff. End all be all, I'm not so sure. I wish I could give some alternatives off the top of my head, but I am I am quite satisfied with this book. I know I know there, that there is better stuff out there, but for a starting point, this is pretty fantastic.